That was the day that uh, war was declared. We, we, we were all uh, concerned and interested and, and we'd recently got um, uh, an, a new radio and it, it was about that wide and it was like a big curved speaker. It's quite a posh thing. And we all gathered round that uh, to hear what uh, the Prime Minister got to say. And, and of course it was consequently we are at war and uh, it, yeah, it was a very solemn moment for us all. Even, you know, I was only about nine when the war started but of course uh, we re realised it was very serious. That's the first memory. And I'm just going to do a slight adjustment, so just carry on, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. yeah. And you told me something about family camp and barbed wire or something. Yes, well, as you go up Daisy Lane, of course it's, it's been cut in two now, but you go straight up Daisy Lane, right to the top, and, and uh, th then you come to a crossroads. Uh, in, in fact, it's, uh, yes, it, it is, uh, um, Ogrieve that way, Fradley that way, and over, straight on, used to be over a bridge, uh, onto um, what, what was the drome then. Uh, of course, we'd always gone bike rides all over the place when we were kids, but we couldn't go that one. We used to go to the top of the bridge, stop at the barbed wire and watch the planes at London take off. Uh, it was quite interesting. Like that one, really. mm. Yes, that's right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And you also told me about when you were at school, mm. that you could remember having gas masks and where you got them. Like yes, yes, we all we all had gas masks. We and the the depot where we got them from was uh, was Mr. Orme, George Orme, I think it is, down Post Office Lane. And as you go in that gateway to go to his garden, that, that those outbuildings on the left, that that they, they they kept all the gas masks there, and we we toddled off down there, and they fitted them for us, and uh, and that was that. And um, I remember my sister. Georgina, she was only five when I was nine, and uh, she didn't like the Mickey Mouse one. Uh, it was supposed to be special for the kids, and they'd take to it, but it scared them to bits mostly. <laughs> it was a funny red-looking Mickey Mouse thing. Do you remember what it looked like? I mean, I, I really couldn't draw you a picture of it. It was a sort of, yes, that's right, it was uh, unlike the, the, the ones that had a, like a pig snout house. Uh, it, it it had got a, a a thing sticking out like a um, like a tongue that 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 that, that went <coughs> if if you blew through it uh, and 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 it was red um, yes it, it could be a bit scary for kids. Did you have to do? Tell me if you had to do gas mask drill. Uh, I don't really remember doing a drill, and I, 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 I think they did give us a, a couple of uh, uh, lessons. But then, apart from that, oh yes, but, uh, yes, at school, that they, they, they used to uh, uh, occasionally give you a drill. Yes, and of course it was in a box about like that, and and we had to carry it everywhere. We had to sling it over a shoulder on a string and carry it everywhere, and we did really, yeah. Do you remember there being evacuees at school? Yeah. Is that the school? That's the school, yes, yes. <laughs> it's half-term holiday. Yeah, uh, is it? Yeah. Oh, they must be having a game or something then, <laughs> yes. Is it... Um, shall I go and tell them to shut up? <laughs> I, don't I don't think it'd be successful somehow. So is there anything else about school and wartime? No, the only thing I can remember is that uh, if, if, if the sirens went, we, we, we had to go into the shelters. And it didn't happen very often because they, you know, they were bombing Birmingham and Coventry. So, um, But they often did come over this way. Mind you, that was... Uh, late in the evening, we'd we'd hear the uh, the drone of the um, uh, um, German aircraft. They had a particular whom whom whom, and they said that's 
the bombers they're going to bomb Coventry or wherever uh, yes they they had um, a row of buildings as you, as you come round um, uh, up to Copper Kentish Bridge and go round to the church facing you there was a row of um, buildings well it, it was a, an air and shelter at first and after the war they co uh, converted them into uh, um, ex extra uh, school rooms and of course they knocked down now these houses um, Can I just ask you, I'm sorry to be picky, just be careful about tapping the furniture. Oh, right. I'm sorry, it's yeah. just that it's picking up. Cause it's yeah, is it? Oh, right. Yeah, I should have chosen a softer <laughs> mm -hmm. settee, but just be aware of that. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. I'm still recording. So yeah. I'm trying to look at Graham, don't you? Yeah, know? yeah. Oh, right. Ignore the fact that I exist. Yeah. And do you remember whether there were evacuees in school? I don't remember many. That there was, uh, we lived at Twenty Two Main Street uh, at the time, uh, and um, that's the last house as you go up the main street um, towards the main road. And uh, opposite, they had two evacuees, uh, two girls, and uh, I don't remember them uh, going to the same school. I think they probably went to Miss Hunter's school or or or, or, or perhaps um, the Friary, but. Uh, um, Ah, there were a couple of uh, other evacuees, but um, I don't remember the names. I, I don't remember anything about them clearly. But we did. We had a sprinkling, as you might say. Mm. Yeah. But you used to. Uh, you were telling me you used to like the time when the Americans came through the village. <laughs> oh yes, when the convoys, convoys came through the village, we used to um, run behind and say, "Got any gum chum <laughs> or what have you." <laughs> Uh, we weren't very lucky very often, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, and of course, they had um, uh, dances at the um, at the drome. Uh, I wasn't into dancing then; I was a bit young. But uh, the my dad wouldn't let the girls go either. Didn't want them deflowered. I don't think. <laughs> Oh yes, yes. My dad was in the Home Guard, and the their um, base used to be the William the Fourth, and um, they used to go on manoeuvres, and um, that's what partly responsible for taking us away from Ori was during the war, because my dad met a fellow named Mr. Todd, that used to live in the Paul Pry, that's now gone. That used to be opposite Leesleys, and. Um, he asked him to go and be uh, the manager of his munitions factory in Birmingham. It used to be a cycle factory before the war, they turned it over to munitions. And Dad hadn't been there that long, perhaps six months, twelve months, and this accident happened. He got bashed on the head with one of these great big... Um, there, there wasn't a guard on the machine and, uh, and, and you, you know, the belts and these big nuts that held them together. That's, he was never the same after that. And he was in hospital for six months in Birmingham. And then they said he's got to go to the country. So we went to live in Burton for a month or two. And then um, uh, um, about 12 months later, we came back to the village when the house became vacant again. But you will recall rationing. And oh, crikey, yes, yes, yes. yes. Like tell, me, tell me what you can remember about that. Well, you only had a, a, a very small portion, two ounces of this and four ounces of that and all the rest of it. Uh, Mum was very good at managing with uh, with very little. And um, of course, we'd always got Arthur Hood to fall back on. Uh, he was um, he used to drive a lorry for Bannisters. And um, I think he was lorry driver to various places. But uh, he used to keep a pig. And of course, he was allowed to keep a pig in those days. But uh, Arthur kept two and, he, and he'd got one on the QT so his friends got um, a bit of extra meat ration. <laughs> uh, and of course the sweets were on ration that, uh, and um, uh, some, some folks that weren't very keen on sweets they'd sell the coupons to somebody else and that's how we managed. Probably we'd have been as fat as butter if we'd have had uh, as many, many sweets as we liked at that age. Perhaps just just as well. Yes. Mm. And can you remember the war ending? 
Yes. Yes, I, re um, I remember, well remember, we were gathered round the radio again, of course, and uh, the, the Nats the war ended and everybody went wild. And of course, we had a straight, a st very street parties in the village and, and one was right outside our house. And um, yes, yes, it was, it, was, it was quite a moment. Mm. I can't remember what sort of food you had at the street party, can you? Oh, well, all sorts of usual things. I mean, everybody was um, uh, quite handy at cooking, and it would be, uh, you know, tarts and sandwiches and, uh, and and cakes. We managed very well for cake during the war because Mum was a good cook, and we didn't have to buy any as long as she could get some flour and some. Sorry, I'm, I can't, I'm, I'm, oh, sorry, I'm doing it again, aren't I? I can just hear yeah. the, the leather squeaking yeah, all the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. Maybe just put your hands on. on yeah, yes. Together on your lap. I'm sorry. It's just <laughs> right, sorry. Yeah. That's all I'm hearing. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't spoiled it. No, no, yeah. no. Okay, I'm, I'm still rolling. It's okay. Yeah. What about entertainment in the village? Uh, well, we'd got um, a good old village hall, of course, and uh, we got um, a, a travelling cinema that used to come round, Clifton Cinemas, and they used to come round. Uh, I think it was every month, and um, we we saw stacks of Abbott and Costello films, and uh, you know we, we saw some good films there. It was it was jolly good. Um, for the rest, we we used to go into Litchfield uh, to 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 the Regal. That was a jolly good cinema. Um, uh, yes, I. Uh, <coughs> It's it's a bit late of some of this memory is because I used I used to take Jean there, uh, we used to pay three and six each to be in the balcony, but that, that was probably just a bit after the war. <clears throat> so in the war, how would you have got to Litchfield? Uh, we quite often cycled, and sometimes we walked it, because we you know, we didn't think twice about walking to Litchfield in those days or cycling it. In fact, when. Uh, at, when we came back to Orrie was from Birmingham during the war, brothers and sisters were still in Lodge Road in Birmingham, and and they um, they uh, uh, Les and Lucy, that's the brother and sister, um, went back and forth on Mum and Dad's tandem uh, to to Birmingham, and uh, you know they thought nothing of it really, and uh, I was trying to think. No, I'm afraid I've dried up. Um, Tell me about learning to swim then, when you were a oh, child. Oh, well, that was down the river, uh, you know, the river lane now. But, but, uh, you go over the Bailey Bridge opposite the old vicarage. The lane's nearly overgrown now, but it, it was like a like a highway in our day. Uh, all the village, every summer, even if it looked, looked like being warm, we were down there and um, jumping off the bank or jumping off the bridge and swimming in the river. It was great. And, and um, yeah, it's probably a lot cleaner then than it is now. Uh, yes, that, yes, that was good. And of course, um, apart from that, we used to be uh, away across the countryside. Uh, you know, Mum never used to see us from morning till night because we were rambling around the countryside and having a good time. And, 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 and another thing was that uh, there's an old vicarage. I suppose it's been tarted up now. Uh, but uh, as you go to uh, uh, over Chetwin Bridge and under the railway bridge and, and, and you, you bear left and then right again straight away. I think it goes to, to Elford or something uh, eventually. But there was a, a, a vicarage along there and uh, we used to go there. It was empty and we used to roam around that. Uh, one of my brothers nearly fell down the well. There was a well in the kitchen. And uh, and it just got got a wooden top on, and uh, it, 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 it really nearly fell down there. But uh, it was a great playground. Of course, they got a lovely orchard there. Apples all being neglected, nobody lived there. So uh, yes, uh, that was great fun. I hope nobody comes along and prosecutes me now. I've said that. <laughs> so you had a lot more freedom. Oh yes, yes. Well, I mean, you you hadn't got the problems of uh, kids today. I mean, there's there there wasn't the predators about, or at least not so many of them. 
and uh, we, we had a free end to, to do what we want. And of course, we didn't even tell, always tell mum and dad where we'd been, you see, when we come back. Uh, yes, it was, we had, yes, we had quite a good childhood. I'm, I'm glad I'm not uh, a, a child now with having to deal with the situation today. Mm. Explain to me about the shallows and what happened there. Uh, well, when we got fed up of uh, swimming at the river, we used to cut across the fields, and that was the other side of the river from where you go down the lane, and we used to go diagonal across the fields, uh, go a couple of fields, and then we used to come to the chalice, and that was the Swarbourne. And and uh, you could look across uh, the, the river, and there was um, Witchner Hall standing there, quite plain. In fact, you could... Um, it was only about a foot deep for, for about oh, two or three yards or more and you could walk across and uh, we used to paddle in, walk towards, uh, if you went to your right there was uh, uh, trees overhanging and it was quite dark but it got quite deep there. We used to walk until we couldn't walk any further and then turn round and swim back. That's how we learnt to swim. Sim similar job in the river because the, the, the river got deeper as you went towards the bridge. So we used to walk as far as we could, then turn round and, and swim back. We taught ourselves to swim. Pony field and sand pits. Is that something to do with playing? Yes. Uh, yes, we, we, always, we used to go down to the pony field a lot and there was a, a big sand pit there. Uh, and um, it had been used for years and years, and there was sort of uh, part of the sand pit that had grassed over at the bottom, and then the new bit that they'd started, and that's where where the legion used to be. Remember where the legion? I think it's Poppy Gardens now. And um, yes, we used to have a lot of fun there, digging in the sand pit and nearly getting buried. <laughs> So is, is there anything else you can think of? Uh, no, 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 not offhand, no. No? That's everything we talked about last time. Mm, that, that, yes, that, yes, that yes, I, I, yes, I imagine that pretty well covers it, yes. Yeah. Hmm. No, it, it, uh, it was um, just a bit scary sometimes when... Um, when we did hear the planes come in, and it probably wouldn't have made much difference, but we all used to go and, and sit in the bogey hole. At the bottom of the stairs, there was little, this place that it was about only about three foot wide and four foot deep, and, and it was not under the stairs, but facing, facing the stairs. And I, I suppose Dad thought that it was those three walls and it, it'd stop anything falling on us, but we used to sit in there when, when the planes went over. Yeah. Yes, that, that that was scary, and uh, um, there was the odd bomb dropped on the drone. Whether whether they were trying to get anything that they knew was there, uh, or whether it was just jettisoning the odd bomb on the way back from the raid, I don't know. But uh, it was fairly well, in fact, very well uh, camouflaged. The drone was, and uh, they didn't get much of a go at it. Mm. Okay. 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 And then, um, if he needs to ask you anything, that's fine. But I'll be quiet oh, as well because I don't want my yeah, voice on it. Exactly. Yeah. I'll just be doing a lot of nodding. And you, so, can, you can edit it anyway. Of course I can. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell me about how you got involved with the the village hall in the first place, sort of it, mainly sixties and. That. Well, well, well that, this this was uh, Sonny and Hilda Dutton. Uh, they they'd come back. They'd been living in Burma. Uh, and um, they came back to, to live in the, the village. And Malaya. At Malaya, I'm sorry. OK. Sorry. Um, and, of course, th they were sort of uh, very sociable people and they got involved with uh, uh, Con and Nell and, uh, and, and various people in the village. And um, he, it, it was at his instigation that uh, I, I did the, the weekly draw for, for, for the village hall which was drawn at the the dragon uh we we sold tickets that were on a roll uh, a, a bit like uh, railway tickets used to be and um, there was um uh, about 10 collectors and we had some bags made and um, uh, so many tickets in each bag and they collect around the village for the village hall and that was the one thing 
the other was. Um, Can you tell me tell me what you were collecting money for and how much you collected on it? Uh, that's more difficult. Uh, whatever we collected went to the village hall, but I, I don't remember any, any uh, uh, amounts. I know we had um, prizes of five pounds uh, and ten pounds uh, that for, for, the, for the first and second prizes. Uh, I should imagine it wasn't much more than fifty pounds uh, at the most that went to the village hall, but but uh, it, it was all for the village hall, and uh, and then when. Um, it was. Uh, we started doing a, um, a bingo, then, and and Hilda Povey was involved, and she called for the first oh, for quite a while, and and, and then she gave up, and I, t I, t I took it over, and we did that for quite some time, and uh, proceeds all to the village hall. But I'm afraid I can't give you. Um, you know uh, how much we did. Uh, 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 of course, I wasn't the treasurer. Um, so, can you tell, describe to me what the village hall was like before the alterations in the seventies? It was very much as it is now. The main hall hasn't changed much, and and um, we used to uh, uh, have have dances occasionally. Not not my dances, but before that. And and there was a, um, it was quite cheap, and and there was a fireplace. You know where the 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 side door is now. There's a fireplace, along there somewhere, and there's a fireplace along the other end, um, uh, the other side, and uh, we there used to be just chairs all around, and um, so we used to quite, quite take me on a journey through the front doors as you walked in. What would you see, and then you go through, and then what was beyond that? So take. Because I've never seen that. So yes, well, yeah, yes, well, we went through the front doors, of course, and uh, that there was a, a a gents' cloakroom that side and a women's cloakroom that side. Then it fed into the hall, and as I said, there was a fireplace there and a fireplace the other end, and you sat there. I don't remember much about the refreshment bit. I think they were probably a bit sparse in those days, um, but uh, then we used to have it used to be um, various. Um, uh, Bands, Madame Bruce, uh, you used to have a, 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 a combo, about three of them playing, uh, and um, I can't remember the, the name of the other people. And anyway, it, it used to be quite good, it, but, but, but Spartan, sort of. Uh, but everybody enjoyed it. Tell me about the toilet facilities. I, I still can't remember. Well, well I know that the, 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 the loo upstairs was... Um, the ladies, mainly, and, and unless you know they wanted to do something else, uh, and and um, the outside, uh, there was a, a sort of a, a a wall built up on three sides with a with a, the tank because we used to have uh, um, not oil. gas um, oil 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 yes for the central eating and that was the roof of the the, the gents and it was it was very uh, very basic um and and, and that, that and that's all there was i, I don't I, I think i was quite pleased when well obviously i was quite pleased when, when it was upgraded a bit but um so can you remember what the reaction was from the village when the when the facilities were upgraded the new toilets and the Kitchen area. Well, oh, everybody was quite pleased, and uh, so that 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 was the sort of beginning of, of of it being used a little more. Really, I think um, uh, for um, uh, there was dance classes upstairs. Um, uh, Mrs. Cox yeah. uh, used to have dance classes upstairs, uh, and um, and and of course then the uh, the play group came into being, and. Um, uh, you don't, I don't want to say too much about that. <laughs> uh, but, but, but but there was always wanting more space. Uh, but but every uh, actually it did work in together fairly well. Um, well. Can you remember anything of what it was like when the building work was taking place? Because I, I spoke to Ian Kirkland and he said it was Wards who did the building. Is it was it Wards? Yeah. Well, he didn't do a very good job, did he? <laughs> Uh, I, I couldn't remember who did the job. I knew it wasn't Bannisters. He wouldn't do a job like that. 
Um, no, uh, it was Billy Ward. Was it not, not Arthur Ward? I don't know. And there was two. Um, do you do you know where Urn Lodge is in the village street? Um, towards going going up towards the main road. I think the one that Ian was talking to was the one that used to be in um, the side of the George. You know, in the. Uh... Oh, that's right. Well, that's Billy Ward. Yes, right. yes, yes. His brother was further up the village. There was Bannisters that side, and uh, and and uh, Arthur Ward that side. Um, yes. Uh, that's who it would be. I don't, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say on film. No I'm not going to say on film. <laughs> some right. of that, no. Because uh, <laughs> Diane wouldn't be very pleased. I don't suppose. Because, um, because Diane, you know, the postman was his yeah. daughter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so yes. tell me about the dances that you used to run there, because you had a highly polished floor at one time, didn't you? Yes, I did, yes. The, the, the floor hadn't long, um, well, it'd been in a year or two, I suppose, uh, and um, before the dances, we, we had uh, something we called, um, oh, traffic wax. And I used to, you put a pool of that on and, and, and spread it with a brush all over the floor. And, and that was the, the night time and uh, the, 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 the next day, the d day of the dance, I went down there in the morning and, and we got a bumper, what you call a bumper, and polished it all up and it, it made quite a good floor. There's only, only one person slipped in all the years we had the dances and um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just one of those things. Um, but then... Um, I'm just trying to think. Oh yes, that came about, those dances, because um, we had uh, Ministry of Education uh, dances uh, um, and they, they came, um, a, fa a person named Margaret Longford came and she taught us various sequence dances uh, and um, after a while everybody seemed to enjoy it. There was people from Barton came, uh, quite a few people from Oriwas there was, uh, I think there's about 40 to 50 people all together. And I said to them, uh, if, if I put a dance on tape then, uh, of all the dances that we do, in um, ballroom as well, would you like to try it? And, well, I tried it and, and we were doing it for about 20 years or more. Uh, it was anyone else, he had a, a, a hip operation that it all came to the end. Unfortunately, and uh, but of course it's and it's all by the board now. People don't do that sort of dancing anymore. So tell me about the floor because I know you're explaining about how it's put together. Can you explain how how the, the village hall floor is put together and if you what would it look like if you went underneath it? Uh, well, w what uh, I used to do was um, uh, mindful of as as much room as you could get to dance. Uh, there was there was that apron that was on the stage. And at one time, it was just one big apron. And believe it or not, I got it on the stage all on my own. I lifted one end up, put it on, and shoved it on. It made it a little bit easier when it was cut in two. But we used to pop that on the stage to get extra room. Uh, and then uh, the uh, deep more side of the uh, hall, we used to uh, put several tables down and then across to the door at the other end. And then the rest was dancing space. Um, what about underneath the floor? I'm thinking of as hmm? well. What was it? Tell me about what's what it's like underneath the floor and the, oh, you know, the sprung floor. As oh well. blimey! Yes. Uh, well, it's uh, it wasn't too bad, was it? Uh, uh, I don't think I could do it nowadays. I should just explain get, to me what the sprung floor is and how it's how it's uh, Well, um, it, it's um, it was a very good wood floor uh, and 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 underneath. Uh, uh, a bit between the, the the floorboards and and the what supported them is you you that there was there was these wedges and there was an awful lot of wedges and it, it's it was a, a faulty idea to my mind because these wedges gradually fell out and you had to get underneath and pop them back in again but on the whole it's been quite a good floor over the years so nothing to run about but uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it needs. Uh, it, it, it could do with a bit of a tweak. <laughs> uh, and what's special? Why a sprung floor? Why would you want a sprung floor? 
Well, if it's too rigid, uh, it, 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 it wouldn't do it. So for a dance floor, it's got to be uh, uh, slightly sprung and, um, you know, too rigid. Too rigid to be like dancing on concrete, you see. So it needs a little bit of... It give, you, give you that little bit of uh, play, yes, yeah. So you said that after the um, the place was extended, there were more groups using the um, the hall. Can you remember some of the, the types of things that... You mentioned the ballroom dancing, but yeah. other things that used to take place down there? Oh, yeah, well, well there was all sorts. There was... Um, mm, uh, Trying to think, that there there was the the the, the tap dancing and and um, uh, Joy Cox's uh, sort of dancing. Um, there was um, uh, a young lady that used to do a keep fit up, up in the top room at the village hall. Um, I'm trying to remember what else is. There, there, there was there was there was quite a few things went up, but I, I can't remember them all. I'm sorry. Did you have much to do with the drama? Sorry, you're gonna Drama. Drama, you said. Drama. Oh yes, mm. oh yes, the drama. Yes, yes. Oh yes, <laughs> used to used to be a balancing act between the drama and 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 the the, the play group and whatnot, and it, it, it got quite um, interesting at times. <laughs> what they all wanted extra space. Well, it? that's right. Yes, they all wanted time, and 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 there's only so much time and space that you can give them. You see, um, but. It, it all worked out on the whole, yes. Yes, the drama. The drama came in, oh, uh, I should say, uh, the, the 50s. Uh, um, m yes, yes, the 50s, mid mid to late 50s. And they did a jolly good job. They had some jolly good plays in there. Um, the importance of being earnest was one that comes to mind. And uh, Jan Watson was, was a big star in all that. Um, Poor dear, she's gone now. She's passed over. Um, Tell me about the involvement of your sons in uh, keeping the hall ticking over or well, warmed up. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I used to be, uh, as you know, the uh, I've been everything at the village hall at one time or another. But that that this particular time was the booking secretary. Uh, so so um, I used to d d tell the lads to go down and turn the heating on for this. Person, uh, um, this person or that uh, production, and um, they, they performed very well. Um, Nick Nick did it first, and 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 then so David came into it later when Nick Nick was a bit older, uh, and they, they were jolly good support over the years. In um, uh, and because I mean you were involved in the visual. Certainly, I mean, I've been in the village thirty odd years, and you were involved then. When, when did you stop being involved with doing the bookings and sort of, who did you hand over to from from then on? Um, I took over from Claire Gold, and I'm quite, and I can't quite remember who I handed over to. Um, oh, Karen. Um, now what's her name? Uh, you, you you know where the the butchers uh, is. Uh, the, 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 on this um, the back lane, uh, uh, Karen. Somebody lives there. Karen. Uh, I don't um, remember. No. no, I can't think now. But but I think she 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 took over the bookings after me, and uh, her house is right next to the the, the where they kill all the beast. Um, Do you remember being involved at all in any of the early moves to? Um, Recite the village hall, or rebuild it, or sort of middle nineties. I think it all kicked off. Yes, yes. I, 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 there was a lot of discussion about uh, having the um, the field at the top of here uh, on the left hand side before you go on to the um, five one three. Um, Lee, was it Leavesley's that uh, said we could have that if he could have something else? He always wanted something in in re return. Um, and and th and then there was the bit about it being um, recited behind the cricket pavilion, uh, but but uh, n nothing came to any. Uh, the cricket pavilion, there was there was no um, parking there anyway. You see, I know we've got uh, no parking where it is, but uh, on the whole, it's a village hall, and and people shouldn't go. But in uh, you know, if they live in the village, they should walk there. I mean, we always do. Um, I haven't got a car anyway. 
But, uh, you know, you, you shouldn't, especially in these, uh, these days, you should be environmentally friendly and walk to these places. Uh, but uh, th th that's what did for the one by the cricket pitch, although there was quite a bit of ground there, but it was getting to it, it was a bit landlocked. And I think in the end, the <coughs> the costs were ridiculous. I think it was getting up for a million pounds, and was it? Oh yeah, my God! There wasn't yeah. the money there. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that. mm. oh that's that's. Because no I think it was scaled down from yeah, yeah. over a million, mm. but then down to eight hundred thousand, which is still a lot of money. It was a lot of money. Yes, the, yes, you know, yes, yes, something. yes. Who was True. the lady down Deepmoor that I thought took the booking um, from you? She lived down Deepmoor. And that that was Claire. Claire Claire Gold was a maiden name. Uh, 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 her married name escapes me at the moment. Uh, but um, no, I thought I took it on from her. I took it on from Claire when she gave. M mind you, on uh, on the other hand, she used to do the cleaning as well, and uh, I've had a lot of dealings with Claire over the years. Um, you, you and your uh, your mum and your granny took over the cleaning from Claire, didn't you, yeah. when she gave that up? Um, no, I, th I think I took the bookings over from Claire when she uh, finally gave it up, yeah. OK, that's good for me. Is there anything else you can remember about the the, the village hall, particularly? Um, at this moment, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it, 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 everything deserts you, but... Um, it's ghostly when it's empty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about the village generally, because obviously you've seen it all change. I'm thinking about the big housing developments that happened in the 60s and 70s, like Micklehome and Deepmoor and so on. Do you remember any reaction to those big builds, or how, what you thought about those, the massive expansion of the village? Well, really? nobody was very pleased about it, really. Um, but, uh, as you know, these things you get forced through, and, and, and we've accepted them now. Um I suppose yes. It, it it's uh, it's par for the course, isn't it? Um, I mean, the the walk field, for instance. There was a huge field there, uh, but everybody settled down to it and uh, thought, well, okay, because we kept part, half of the field, you see, for the football and for the uh, as long as they didn't build on the rest. Uh, it all comes out of money in the end, anyway. So it's difficult to stop if you haven't got any money to put up to stop stop it. You see. And if I had enough money, I would um, um, uh, buy all the spare plots up and say no. <laughs> but, but there you are, I haven't. That's that. Yeah. Oakfield Road being built. Mm. Yes, Oakfield Road was built. Uh, let me think. Um, it was. It must have been the. The fifties, the fifties, the, the late fifties or early sixties, yes, because my my brother used to live down uh, Anson Row there uh, when he when he married his uh, first wife, and and we came after a visit one night there. We came to go home, and we came along here, and these houses were just being built, and 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 we popped in one, and I think it must have been this one because we'd just gone round from Oakfield and we crossed the road. And we thought we had a bit of look round, and um, I think that it, I'm pretty sure that it was this one that it was just half built, and uh, that was in the uh, late fifties, early sixties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and your mum were married in 1956, I think, wasn't it? I hope not, because John was born in 55. Oh, right. <laughs> oh, well, a bit, a bit sooner I'll then. Yeah. <laughs> well, two, you moved two, in. Two, two years John before came. then, because we yeah. didn't waste time. I think you moved in, um, and John came along. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, we um, we lived at your Granny Povis down the village at 22 Main Street mm. uh, for the first probably six months, and uh, John John was born there because we used to shop at the Barker's shop then, which is lately gone now. That used to be our usual shop there, which David's pointed out a time or two. It was about five of the week's groceries. <laughs> and and Mr and Mrs Barker, they were very friendly, and, and that they bought uh, a layout for the, the new baby. And uh, so, but then we'd been married about six months, I think, when we came here. 
Yes. And we've been here ever since. Yeah. The six pound was at Spa, where the dentist is now. Oh right, yes. We used to do groceries there. That's right. Yes, yes. That was. Um, yeah, the shops have changed a lot. Of yes, that's right. It used to be Dolman Shop in the beginning when uh, when I was a lad, and and then uh, Mr. Dolman died, and uh, uh, she married again, and in his name it's Tranter. It became Tranter's uh, shop, uh, and then um, at the back of that shop. Uh, they um, they built a, a sort of wooden um, place to, to have receptions in, and uh, and then th there was I don't know whether that arch is still there. There's an arch there uh, where we were had a wedding photo is taken. Mm. Um, where is that? It's in the front room, I think. Sure. Yeah, good. Yeah. Uh, and of course, it was a double wedding, you see, because. Um, uh, Jean and I met through uh, my sister Lucy, <laughs> that married married Jean's dad. This sounds complicated. Uh, and then um, I uh, uh, sort of got friendly with Jean, and that, 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 that's the uh, double wedding photo there. Um, and my old uh, Anson Rowe, and because uh, Les had been married before, and his wife had died. And um, Margaret didn't like the house much, and um, they, they moved to Armitage. Mm. So. Leukemia. Mm. She died of. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. So, what about your your working life? Did you work in the village? You, you worked for some of the builders, didn't you? Uh, from the age uh, of fourteen, I, I went to Bannisters. Uh, that was, um, you know, in Bannisters' old houses now. Um, if you go um, down to the main street, uh, past the turning to Wellfield Road, right, okay, uh, and um, you go, oh, uh, the, all those houses. You know where Paula lives, Paula Stanley. Yes. Well, at the end of that row of houses, there was Bannister's house, and there's a huge yard that goes right through to the Park Road, uh, and that was that, that's Bannister's and the building yard. And uh, I, I went there when I was 14 and became a plumber's mate. Um, uh, he introduced me to the plumber and he said, this is Cyril, he's going to be your plumber's mate. And, and it was Chick Jeffs. And, and he said, uh, oh, that Cyril's too clean for a plumber, we'll call you Jack. So I was Jack all the time on the building. And... Um, I was there until until I was twenty, and uh, of course it was call up, you know, uh, when you were eighteen really, and uh, Mr. Bannister kept me back for a couple of years, but I still had to go, and then when I came out, I went to Edwards in Burton as a plumber for a while, then I came back to Orry was, and I worked for Charlie Kent, you know, where the um, opposite Audrey, where Audrey Bennett used to live. Uh, and uh, then when the there was a bit of lull in the plumbing bit there, and uh, my brother Les had already gone to Armitage and we were working at Armitage Shanks, and um, he was getting quite a good pay. So I thought, well, why not? It meant I had to bike fifty mile a day, but uh, you know that was nothing in those days. Uh, so I went there and I was there for about twenty five to thirty years. Because the building trade in the village sort of declined, it didn't did it? It did decline in, 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 in that, that, that period, yes, yes. And, um, Why would that be, do you think? I don't know, really. Um, I suppose a bit of a boom after the war, and, 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 and then, you know, the, the, then the bus bit. But um, I knew that um, Les was getting a good wage, and I thought, well, that'll do me very nicely, thank you. So I went there, and I got a job, and I was there for... And I'm quite glad because, you know, the building bit, any, any job that I've had uh, um, before, uh, you didn't get, a, they didn't put anything by for your pension. And my Armitage Shanks did, and I get a, a, a monthly pension now from there, which is very useful. Mm. So did and you cycle all the time you worked there? Um, partly, um, there was a fellow that uh, worked uh, that lived uh, just outside the village by the, the what we call Tavner's Garage, but uh, what's it called now? It Pyford Brook anyway, oh, just 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 uh, outside the village, 
and uh, that he gave me a lift for oh perhaps a few months uh, and then um, there was a period where I bought myself a motorbike, a BSA Bantam. Uh, in fact, I had two, and um, the, the one wore out, and I, I never passed the test. Uh, and uh, the, the, the second one, um, I was going up uh, to work one day, and I went up onto the bypass, and, and the, it was like a sheet of ice, and, and the bike flipped over, and I skidded along oh, uh, quite a way. Luckily, those BSA Bantams have a, a, a thing sticking out like that, the footrest, and, and so although my leg was underneath it didn't hurt me but it did put me off and I went back to a bicycle uh, and so um, basically most of the time I worked at Armitage Shanks uh, I cycled um, you, you can take two or three years off for lifts and and, and the motorbike but uh, you know you just you know what you got to do in the morning you got up early enough and you did it and that's that so, so you were quite fit then Oh yes, yes, and I, I think that's, uh, I can blame that for being, um, you know, as fit as I am now really. I mean, I, I can still cycle around with the best of them and um, uh, I think it's to be in good stead really. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So just to finish, how, how do you think the village has changed over the last 50 years, since the 60s say? Oh, it's changed a lot, there's building bits all over the place, uh, um, uh, at Somerville. Um, um, what's the, what's the one that way on um, the Park Road and um, um, Selwyn. 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 Oh yeah, Selwyn Close and the, and the one beyond. Well, that that it's it's changed an awful lot, uh, but uh, not not that much spoiled really. It's still still the village that I knew, except that I do I do miss the where the co-op is now. Uh, you, uh, down the Exchange Road, it used to be a farm, Turner's Farm, uh, and and there were buildings, old farm build, buildings, right from the corner to to quite a way down, past past that great big eye, eye hedge, uh, and and the 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 house was set well back uh, on a big plot of land, um, yeah, and and then here, um, there was a Malibus Croft there. Where, where Jeff Malaby used to keep his um, greyhounds uh, and then there, there was Sylvester's Croft there and there was a, uh, just as you go down here and turn right into the back lane the, um, uh, well first of all there was um, the, the, coal, uh, the coal yard there was a very old cottage and it was a coal yard and we used to have a coal yard there and of course then John, John, John Smith um, uh, built his uh, his new bungalow there, and that was quite nice. But then next to look along there uh, was uh, a, a, used to be an old, not a farm, a croft really, um, Sylvester's, um, and it was quite an old house. Uh, you can tell from one reason. Uh, you know when the uh, they used to tax the light coming into the house. Well, they had windows bricked up, so that that gives you an idea of how old that was. And that was Sylvester's Croft, and of course that's part of the great furlong or little furlong or whatever whatever it is now. Yeah, uh, you miss those. Um, I mean, people now they just they just don't know it. They don't miss those, but we, we do miss those little bits. And then the pony field, um, you know, where the it's Poppy Meadows, isn't it, or something now? Or Burfield Poppy Meadows, or yeah. Like that. Uh, there's Burfield Meadows and Poppy Gardens. Well, that was a huge field that we used to call the Pony Field, and there was a big sand pit in there, and um, we used to go in there and play and dig holes and uh, run the risk of burying ourselves in this sand pit. And of course, then later on, that was filled in, and the Legion bought the field and they built their uh, Legion there. And then there's one or two freeloaders that messed that up and uh, then they had to sell it. And um, of course they've got the Tree Cafe now. Yeah, what yeah. was the Tree Cafe? Do you remember much about the Tree Cafe? When that was... Oh, the Tree Cafe has been there for ages and it was a transport cafe, of course. Uh, and um, it was quite a good one, really. Uh, but then um, it must have gone into decline a bit because the... Um, uh, 
when the Legion wanted a place, they bought it and transformed it. Mm. Did you ever have anything to do, well, I suppose you did, but with the Oliver Show, do you remember how that's changed over the years? Uh, well, yes, uh, uh, when I was a lad, and we used to go, it used to be in the Paul Pry field. Uh, do you have any idea where the Paul Pry was? Yeah. I do, on the A38. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, of course, it would be halfway over the A38. Now. Well, um, they knocked that down and made the road the way through. Well, uh, as, as you face the Paul Pry there, it, it was just right on the pavement, and you walked along a bit, and there was a, a bit that went back that made quite a, a car park, and, and then there was a field beyond we called the Paul Pry Field, and it was there for years, the, 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 the show. Um, then, of course, you know, the, the motorway came through and they had it down uh, down the lane going towards... Um, uh, towards Fradley. Uh, no, no, not Fradley, no, to, to El Elford and, and that way on, yeah. The, the, uh, the way you have to go now to go to the Arboretum. It was it was a field down there, only a little way. Um, in fact, I think it was in a couple of fields in in that vicinity, and then um, they managed to raise the money and buy this field. Did, fact, were you ever involved in it at all? Mm -hmm. Did you? Uh, no. Uh, w w when when the, f the show was in the Paul Pry field, I was just a lad. And we used to go down the rail, because it was up, bounded by the railway on the one side. We used to go down the railway and we have a gap ticket. What's a gap ticket? A gap ticket was, you didn't have a ticket, you just get through a gap in the hedge. And <laughs> Fair enough. So do you remember what it used to be like in the in the in the earlier days? Oh, it, it was it was it's, it's always been a good show. Um, there was, uh, in, in fact, in those days, where's Punch and Judy, uh, and uh, you don't see that so much now. But yes, it's it's always been quite a good show. And in those days, also, we used to have a uh, there was a tent where you did miniature gardens. I think probably they're bringing it back just now, but but you could have a tray and and um, pebbles and whatnot and manage, um, put a, a miniature garden in the show. And. Um, I think we did that a uh, time or two, even though we got in through the gap, we did put the miniature gardens in. <laughs> so that's when you were kids? Yeah, that's, oh, that's yeah. right, yeah, yeah. Because it changed, didn't it, from being an agri mainly agricultural and horticultural to more of a carnival type well, of thing. Well, that's right, yes, yes, yes. Yes, they used to be the old, in the old days, the, um, the traction engines there and, and all the rest of it. Yes, it, it's, it's always been quite a good show. And David does quite a good job of it now, doesn't he? In fact, we're, um, when, uh, I'm not sure when it is, but uh, my sister Lucy, she lives in um, in Litchfield, and, and she does, doesn't like to miss the Oliver show, and so she comes here, she stays the night, and then uh, and then goes back the next day. Yes, yeah, Richard Kirkland who's a chair now, chairman. Oh, yeah, oh, yes, yeah. Yeah, Richard, yeah, yeah, yeah. David did it for... Uh, years, I yeah, think, so. yeah, all uh, right. Yes, yes, they're doing a grand job, really. Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's good for me. Are you happy with that? Or is there yeah, yeah. Well, unless you have anything else you want to ask me, I can't think of anything no, at the no, moment. No, no. It's just nice to get that anyway, you can always come back again if necessary. <laughs> and, and 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 David's willing. Uh, well, David's sort of thinking about it now, aren't you? Yeah. Well, yes, I'd say I'd like to go okay. being milkman and uh, and Coleman. <laughs> It didn't have anything to do with Oru's show, to my knowledge. Uh, my, grand, uh, my my father was um, uh, the, the coalman in the village in, in days gone by with, with a dray and the bags of coal on. Uh, and um, that was for the co-op. And, and also for the co-op, he was on the weekdays, he was got one of those carts with two wheels, you know, and just a shaft, and, and that's the bread and cakes. And he used to do that. And that's... Of course, when the war started, this fella talked him into going to Birmingham to work in munitions, and uh, it's the worst thing he ever did, really. He had an accident in a factory there, and he's never the same since. Mm. But uh, health and safety regulations, then, was it? Oh, crikey, they'd, uh, they'd have been sued out of existence if, if that had been in existence then. Maze Alley. Hmm? Maze Alley. 
that arch. Yes, Maze Alley, that, uh, you know, where, where the complex is at the end now. Um, you, you go down there and you turn left, and that first house there, Dad used to keep his horse in us. The, 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 the bit that's the kitchen now, that there's a big sort of arch. That was the stable where Dad used to keep one of his horses. There were lots of coal yards in the village at one time, weren't there? Yes, where was the other one? Um, oh, uh, the, 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 yes, there was one at the top of the alley there, at Maze Alley, and, and the other one was at the end of the back lane, we we always called it. Uh, it's Furlong Lane, isn't it now? Uh, that, that, where where John Smith's built his bungalow, there used to be a coal yard there. Wasn't there Princess the back of Father Village Hall, the back of there? Yes, yes, that was yeah, princes. Right. Yes, yes, they used to have a coal yard, didn't they? There as well. That's right. Yes, and and of course, that one. Uh, what was the one at the bottom of um, uh, Castro's Bridge? As uh, as you come down uh, from the vicarage, uh, uh, it was wharf the cottage. the wharf. That's right. There was a, a wharf there. Yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, I think I'm done. The, the, there's um, a piece of paper that uh, says all about the, the village hall when we bought it for the village. Oh, I can't right. find the darn thing. But um, as regards the stage, there was a question, somebody brought the question up, shall we have to ask the Earl of Richfield if we can shift the stage? And and, uh, and we, we didn't because it wasn't his place then, he'd already sold it. So. Um, Oh, so you reckon that um, once it had become the, the property of the village, yes. then we didn't need to ask that permission anymore? No, that's right, yes. yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Well, while, we, while we're talking about that, yeah. um, obviously you had a long association with the village hall. Yes, yes. Now, I only know the village hall as it is now. Can you sort of paint me a picture of what it used to look like before... The 1975 refurbishment, I think it was. Well, it, it, it hadn't got that top on the front. It was just a single story at the front. And there was a window, uh, um, a, a, a rather large window, which was rounded. It was, it was a sort of a half moon shape. And um, we used to... Um, we used to go and climb on top there when... Uh, uh, something was going on and, and watch it from outside <laughs> uh, and at, at, uh, in those days as well the um, mind you this is before the 70s uh, um, uh, and a van used to come round with um, pictures oh um, I can't remember the name of Clifton's it Clifton cinemas that's yeah, right yes. That yes. Before, and, uh, yes that's right and uh, we used to see some jolly good films uh, Abbott and Costello and uh, uh, you know we, and it was quite cheap too <laughs> so what was it like because I've, I've got the um, the original uh, plans from from yeah. Brian I'm thinking of the yeah. foyer area that we've got now well, well it, it was doing. the door was at the front a double door and and there, there was a, a cloak room either side uh, men that side, women that side, I think, and then then the door into the hall, and um, and then that then when the refurbishment uh, uh, refurbishment they they built on top, of course, and of course that tied in when when the stage was moved because then it was used as a backstage area. Um, the stage used to be. Um, the other end as you know and and it was all dismantled and just leaned against the wall when it wasn't being used and um, I think that was a good thing to move that but um, I know that uh, uh, when it was moved that there was an apron that it was just one piece wasn't it well when, when I had a dance there at, more than once I've got that apron all of it onto the stage by myself I just lifted it up and just dumped it on, and then you can. But I couldn't do it now. Well, it weighs a ton, even the two halves. It, it no does, yes, ton, yes. And I, oh, the, the the two halves I've hoisted up there many times. When I, because I used to have a dance once a month. Tell me about the dances, though. Tell me what the dances. Well, it started when um, it was sometime in the seventies, I suppose, because we did it for about twenty, um, twenty five years at least. Um, the. Uh, education authorities uh, 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 provided this woman to teach us dancing you see and it was sequence dancing then basically and um, we did it for, for a while and, and then I, I, after a while I said 
because there was about 20 or or more that used to come every week and um, I said if, if I put a dance on tape uh, would, you, would you like to try it and so I did I did um, um, uh, I put about three or four dances on uh, and, and, and left a space so, so I could pause it and then uh, uh, after a while put two or three more on it worked very well and uh, as I say we did it for about 20, 20 to 30 years and until my sister broke a hip and that's when when it stopped and never started again unfortunately so tell me about the floor because you were very particular about your floor the floor you? um yes that they'd, they'd had it uh, sanded off a time or two um because that's the the original floor was only pine i think and they ripped that up and put this this new floor down uh and but but then it obviously that needed looking after it wasn't looked after that well uh, so what I had to do uh, on the Friday night, I uh, got some traffic wax and I'd pour a, a little pool on and, 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 and spread it with the brush all over. And then I went on Saturday morning uh, before the dance and with the bumper, got quite a big bumper and, and buffed it up. It, it, it was quite good. Um, uh, it, for, for a long time we had quite a good floor in that hall. It's not bad now, but it's not looked after as well as it might. No, be. I think uh, that's part of what um, is going to happen. Is that floor is going to be polished again? Yes, yes, yeah. it is a good floor. Yes. Isn't it? and um, I've been under that floor as well because it's a sprung floor, and uh, it's it's not a very good idea in a way because there's wedges that that they, you you tap under the between the boards and the supports, and of course eventually they fall out. So, so then you have to go underneath and, and find them and put them back in again. And, and there's what? There's about that much room, I think. And and I, I've, I've been all around that underneath there a time or two. I would not like to go there now because sometimes I stretch my leg out and I get the cramp and, uh, and it wouldn't be very good under there. <laughs> 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 so what was it like you know where the kitchen is now before the extension was built I've seen the plans but yes. I can't imagine what, what it was like in that but, area well, I, I'm, I find it hard to imagine what it was like as before. far as I can remember there were yeah. Yeah. there were a couple of toilets in one corner a bit of a, a kitchen yes that's right yes there was a um, on, on top I think it was on top of the the, the men's loo that, that they had the um, an oil tank that, that, that ran the cent central heating and, and that was sort of um, just as you go down the side of the hall and you turn to go down the back of it, that was just there. Uh, and um, I'm just trying to think. It, it's been done so long, it's very difficult to... to um, do you remember uh, the process that happened when they decided to do the, the refurbishment? Do you remember how, where they got the money from or anything like that? Or? Uh, well, I, th I think they got... Um, they got a grant from somewhere, I couldn't say where, uh, and of course um, I I used to run a, a, a weekly bingo there, uh, and that all went towards the hall, and also I did, it was yes, in the 70s, I did um, a draw, and we had, um, I got them from somewhere in Burton, I don't know where it was now, um, but it was like reels of tickets. You, you know, you ripped off so many tickets, and uh, I used to buy these reels of tickets, and I've got um, some some fake leather um, and uh, uh, Hilda Dutton that was around at the time. I don't know whether you remember Hilda and Sonny Dutton. No, no they, they were they, they came from uh, from Burma. Uh, they'd been living out there, and they came here. They were they were quite a quite a couple, <laughs> and she made me. Uh, about ten or twelve bags with this, and with, with drawstring tops, and I used to put so many tickets in each bag and give them to the collectors, and they used to go around the village, and we used to draw the thing in the hall, and uh, there was about five, ten, and uh, uh, twenty pounds, something like that, uh, and we did we did that for quite a while. Mrs. Uh, Conway used used to do it. Her son was supposed to do it. She used to live down the Mill End, and uh, her son, I think his name is Terry, the eldest. Was um, that Lucy? Lucy Conway. Lucy Conway. Yes, he 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 was never there to do it, so she did it. Then there was a Mrs. McGregor. Uh, there was and it, uh, and it, there was about ten ten between ten and twelve collectors and, and, and myself each week. And so um, you collected a fair bit of money then. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, every week we. Uh, 
I forget what you charge the tickets now, but uh, uh, it's all handed over to the village hall. Mm. And and of course the proceeds from from my dances. We didn't charge a lot for the dances, but um, but everything went to the village hall. So do you remember how how it was when um, when the hall was refurbished and finally reopened? How it. Can you remember any reaction or how it, how people felt or how you felt? Uh, well, we, we we thought it was jolly good um, um, because uh, it left um, it, it left more floor space in a way, but because that stage did take up rather a lot of space, mm -hmm. and we thought it's a good idea that we, there was the apron there that you could take up when you when you wanted to, uh, and um, I'm still trying to remember what the uh, what the facilities were like, you know, the, the kitchen and the ladies. Mm. I don't think they're a lot different. Because um, it's always removed to the side, yeah. or to the back, weren't yeah. they? Yes, that's right. That. Yes, it moved to the back. Um, Do you remember who did the building? I should imagine that that would have to be one of the one of the builders, either Billy Ward or Arthur Ward. It wasn't Bannisters, I do know that. Um, I should imagine it was one of the wards that did it, but uh, they didn't do a very good job on that storeroom at the side, did they? It's a, and only four and a half where it joins the other building. Yeah. Yes, they built that out, that, that door. Um, the, the, the boiler house is much as uh, it, it ever was. Um, it's, it's a bit more up to date now, but uh, in those days it had an old Sangamo uh, clock for a heater. And, and when when I was uh, doing uh, the, I did the booking for years as well, uh, and um, my lads used to go down and put the heating on for me, because if I'm home from work early enough, that they, they, they pop down, and I think I think David was only about seven when he started. Nick did it in in his turn, and and then uh, David took over, uh, and at one point. Um, Claire, Claire Gold, um, uh, la, um, I forget what her married name is now, Claire Gold, she used to do the bookings and I took over from Claire and I think that was about the 70s and and, uh, and, and that's and of course that's mainly when I had to make sure the heating came on etc. Mm. Okay that's great, let's just, um, in the 60s and 70s was when most of the big estates were built, like Mickle Home and yeah, Dingwall. Yes, so. yes, well, that's Can right, you remember yeah. that period, what people felt about the houses being built? Can you remember them being built or so on? I can't remember much about Mickle Home being built. It was sort of out of the way and you didn't notice it, really. Um, th th they weren't very keen about the, the deep moor uh, because um, it took a, 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 the land of a, a way that might have been car parking for the hall. And there, and there was a bit of disappointment there, um, but of course, as as things happen, they push the people with money want to make more money, so so that they push the plans through. But um, yes, it, uh, it was in the I think it was in in, in late sixties, early seventies, where the, the the hall was bought for the village, and 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 the council were. were um, um, uh, what do you say, custodians, um, but but it, it belonged to the village to do as they liked. When I first started with the, the hall, it, uh, I'm not sure whether the Earl of Litchfield still owned it then, or whether, it, because it was the Oddfellas Hall, mm -hmm. whether whether it belonged to the Oddfellas. I should think it probably did. And Watty Walker, you won't remember him, he's, he'd been dead quite some time. He was an old fellow that used to live in one of those cottages. As you go down the back lane, we've always called it back lane, it's the, they call it for a long lane now. Yeah. Uh, one of those cottages that, that um, just at the other end, just before the bungalows, uh, I mean they're all uh, occupied by somebody else now, they're all die. They lived in the end one and he was the custodian of, of uh, he was the odd fella, uh, of, of the odd fellas that, that, that looked after it, the caretaker. And I used to go, we have to go to him for the key. He was, he was a nice old chap, yeah. what he was. Can you remember any reaction to the houses being built on Walkfield? 
Well, uh, and, and yes, as usual, they didn't want them. I mean, I, I wasn't very keen. I mean, it was a big open space there. And, and uh, I mean, you, obviously you feel that it's going to spoil the village, so they're getting built on. But luckily, they did leave a good space for, for, for the football field and, and, and the cricket pitch. So it hasn't turned out so bad, although, uh, uh, you know, people did object at the time. Can you think, just casting your mind back to, because obviously the village has changed a lot in your time, mm. is there anything major that you, or that you sort of, sticks in your mind that's changed in the village over the years, since, you know, since the 60s onwards? Things like shops and businesses and stuff. Yes, like. oh, oh, well, yes, of course, the, um, uh, the, the, the co-op hasn't always been there. It was, um, it was a farm. Uh, and, and opposite where the surgery is now, there were farm buildings on that side of the road. And, and there was a, quite a large piece of land with the, the house set back. Of course, that was knocked down and they built the shops. Mrs. Simpson, I think she started off with a clothes shop at, uh, uh, on the, where the chip shop is now. Uh, and um, the other end where the paper shop was until fairly recently was, was Harvey's uh, um, um, hardware stuff. Uh, and of course, Hearts across the road, used to, there used to be a garage across the road where the hairdresser is now. There used to be pumps up in the front there and, and they sold bicycles and various bits of hardware. Uh, and they had a, a garage down the side at the back. How, how long did that go on till? When did that close, do you think? Hart's Garage. Uh, I should think it must have been... I don't know whether it... The seventies, I should think, that 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 that, that changed, and uh, um, I, th I think it was changing. Was it hairdresser more or less straight away? It was uh, a video uh, shop for a while, wasn't it? Then oh, 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 that's right. Then yes, it was a cafe, teapots or something for not very long. I seem to remember. That sounds like the co-op at the top of the road, really. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that. But it wasn't. But then it's been a hairdresser for quite yeah. a long time. Yeah. Yes, it, it has for quite a long time. Yes. And uh, yes, no. What, what I was thinking, something else. Oh yes, because leaflets are always changing. That on, on uh, um, that last house going out up the up the main street on your right. That's where we used to live in the old days with the Povis, and because it's been altered considerably. And past that, there is another one that leaflet knocked down when, and also on the corner. Uh, at the very corner there was a, um, a grocery shop and, and there was a wooden cafe type thing in a fairly large car park well as you can see there's a lot of ground there now and um, yes it, uh, I, I was very sorry to see that whole, that shop go and uh, and of course there used to be before as you turn in Leesley's now if going from this direction just on that corner there was a square pillar box about that square and and uh, when these alterations were done, it was knocked down, and it was put on the uh, on a post the other side. Thinking of that part of the village, obviously before the bypass was built, yeah. uh, and we moved in just as the bypass was being built. Yeah, yeah. To get over to the five one three, you had to do a bit of a dog's leg. What was it like trying to? Uh, well, before they built the uh, the um, you know the the bypass. The, the bypass um, it was just a main road and, and you only had to cross wouldn't sort of now you have to cross three times don't you um and of course the paul pry was there and I've, you must have seen pictures in the post office of the paul pry and uh, that stood on the corner there uh and and, and croxel was there paul pry there there was there was railway houses there and um and of course you could go straight down there to that's that was the road to croxel and um, you, you went across the crossings because the station was still there then. Mm. So uh, I'm guessing as time went on that road became more dangerous to cross. Do you remember any incidents there at all? Well yes, uh, um, one of the fellows that lived in the cottage, one of the railway cottages there, Lindsay, uh, he used to um, drink at the Dragon and nearly every night and uh, he went home one night and he got knocked over and killed on that crossing. Was he the chap of the flat cap? 
Uh, yes, yes, he was a flat cap. Little fella, yeah, yeah, just down yes, in the corner. Yes, that's right. A uh, bit baldish and red-faced, and yeah. yes, yes, uh, and that was that was only about what three or four years ago. No, maybe a bit more. Probably a bit more. Yeah, a bit more. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, f- five, six. Do you remember yeah. any sort of car accidents there, or was it just a bit? Um, not really. No, no. It's, it's mainly just people crossing. And, and of course that poor lad came from Litchfield, oh, well, only last year wasn't it? Mm. The taxi dropped him and he, he walked across and got himself killed. Mm. And uh, really they should have bought, uh, built a bridge there. Mm. Uh, uh, I was going to say or a tunnel, but tunnels are a bit difficult in Oros. The water's not far down. <laughs> but, but a bridge uh, 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 would have made things a lot easier. I mean with people living there like that, they're part of the village and, and they're uh, so sort of cut off from it. And with the Arboretum, of course, as well. Well, that's yeah, right, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So what was it like? Because, of course, all the lorries and things would have come through the village at one time, wouldn't they? What was that like? Well, yes, the, the, uh, I think they stopped that, didn't they? Not all that long ago. Leavesleys, the lorries used to come to Leavesleys. But, I mean, before the bypass, the yeah, only way yeah. to get through, oh, oh, yes. to carry out to Tamworth. Uh, oh, that's right, yeah. Oh, yes. Yes, of course, the Fox Lane was in full use then. Um, you know, the chopped off bit. The bus used to come down there and through the village. And, and, and then, then uh, towards Burton, uh, that there's none of this business of going round the village. And I mean, if you wanted to go to Burton, you was on this side of the road. If you wanted to go to Litchfield, you was on the other side of the road. Uh, but was the village a lot, did it have more lorries and traffic coming through it at one time? Well, the, 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 there was rather a lot of traffic going through at one time. Uh, yeah, I, I suppose and that, that was from more or less the 70s and the 80s and even the 90s. I mean, when I was a lot younger, when I used to live down the main street, I used to skate up and down the road. I've got some got roller skates. I got quite good on them. And of course, you only saw the odd car. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So can you remember what it was like in the village when the bypass was built? What the reaction was or what people felt about that? Because mm. of course the road was, the A38 was wide. And yes, uh, yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, well, they were sorry to live the poor, lose the poor pry. And, um, but... On the whole, it, it didn't didn't affect the village too much, really. J- just just the loss of the Paul Pry, and of course, the show the show used to be in that Paul Pry field. You know, as you f- face the Paul Pry there, and which was at the end of the the main facing the end of the main street. There's a huge field there, and and the show used to be on there, uh, but then it moved down to the Troxel Road, and then it's finally ended up uh, this side. At le- at last, they've got their own field. You see, they don't have to. Uh, ask a farmer to let them have one, and well, there's very few farmers left now. Anyway, yeah, that's, that's right. another thing that's uh, that this ch- change. That those little boxes where where Tony lives, they always called them little boxes, and there was a, b- a big farm there, and uh, a farmhouse and a, thr- a thrashing yard uh, along that alley at the back. We used to go and watch them do the thrashing. Um, it was quite an event, you know, the old crocodile going like that. <laughs> it used to mesmerise us. <laughs> But yes, that that was another big change in the village when when they knocked that farm down and built all those houses there. Uh, no, this. Uh, I, I it's still quite an nice little village, but if they carry on like that, I mean, it, we, we we're going to be a town, and uh, I don't know what they're going to do about those down Dark Lane. Uh, um, I should hope they don't get them to build them because it is floodplain, you say. Yeah, well, I mean it's. <coughs> it's all up in the air at the minute, I think. Isn't it, it is, I think that's right, yes. That's why yes, what's going to happen. Yes. I think it's this month that things are going to be decided, I mm, believe. But yeah. I don't know. Yes, this, this other end uh, of Dark Lane, uh, by uh, uh, D- Tom Mellis' old place, they, they've gutted that, haven't they, and they're going to do something with it. But And opposite, the, uh, the other side of the Dark Lane, behind where Perish used to live, uh, well, I think he still lives there now, um, 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 Archie, we call him because uh, it was his dad's name. I know you mean. Um, Peter Corbett. Yes, that's right. Um, there's a huge place being built at the back there, mm-hmm. and uh, it, it looks a bit oversized to me, but there you are. Uh, and of course, there's big trenches you can't get down there now at the moment because yeah. they've got trenches ready to put the services in. Yeah. I should imagine there must be services there already, but. They're probably not big enough for what they want no, to do. No, I think that puts a whole new set of sewer pipes in, plus all the yeah. gas and electricity uh, and telephone uh, cables yeah, have all yeah, been done yeah. at the same time, mm-hmm. I think. So yeah. it's, uh, yes, it, uh, 
makes you think that they're going to build a lot more than that they've started already. Mm. Well, two of them are private people who bought the houses, so it's not, uh, oh, yeah, it's not oh, a big right. building company. Uh, uh, no, so. uh, not um, Jackson then. I think uh, he's got the farmhouse. He's got the, the farmhouse. The rest of it is nothing to do oh, with right. it. Oh, All right. Uh, mm, mm, we shall see. <laughs> hmm. um, okay. I mean, is there anything else that you can remember or think of about how the village has changed or what it was like? What did people do for leisure and recreation? For example, what sort of things went on at the village hall? Because there must have been a lot going on there. Uh, well, even before I started the, the dances, the, 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 there was a dance from time to time. Um, and because uh, that was um, when they had chairs all the way around, there was no central eating, but there was a big fire each side, <laughs> one one end and one the other. Um, yes, there's always been uh, whist drives, and uh, um, and of course the WI have been going for yonks. And, um, uh, yes, dances. Uh, th there was even uh, dances at the Scarecrow at one time. We used to call them the Bob Hop. <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. So uh, most, mostly all the uh, things that go on now, except of course they didn't have the open gardens. That's uh, uh, a, a difference. Yeah. And um, of course the show's been there every year. And um, yes, there was a show dance. They always used to have a show dance. Um, but they, they don't bother now. Uh, of course, when the Beatles appeared on the scene, it buggered the music scene up altogether. You see, no, no, no nobody danced uh, anymore properly. They, it was just jigging about. Oh, right, yeah, and yeah. Uh, uh, well, I don't think we've quite recovered yet. Well, there are still ballroom dance classes on a Thursday night at the. Oh yes, I know. Yes, yes, I promised to go tonight. I, I started going to them when they first started because I wanted to learn the tango. We've done, uh, we're doing the sequence dances, we've got lots of sequence dances and it was sequence tangos and I liked the rhythm and I would have liked to have done the ballroom tango and I started going to these classes and um, they were doing the, um, oh, one of the Latin, the Latin American ones, oh, the samba and she did that for a week after week and I got fed up, I didn't want to learn the samba and, and, and certainly not week after week, so, so I stopped going. But uh, I did go last Thursday, uh, Marlene's doing this dance and uh, I think she's a bit optimistic that uh, she wants to, she'd gone up market and it's £16 and it's champagne and food so I don't know how she'll go but she wanted me to give her a hand uh, but partly putting the the balloons up because for my dance, my special dance, you know, we had a special dance for Charles and Diane's wedding, uh, a Christmas dance and I used to put balloons up for those because there's a, a hook right in the ceiling, right, right high up there. And we used to have to get, uh, I don't know whether those tables are still, you know, those those cast iron tables. Have they, have they took those out? I hope I think not. they've got a long time ago. Mm -hmm. We used to put two of those together and the steps on top. And then I, I'd got a, one of these line props that are telescopic. And, and uh, so... so uh, I've got a, a not, it was your strings, not you have to have cord. Uh, I've got some cord and I've got some some lead in the shed I've, um, from various jobs I've done. And I put a little lead weight on the end and climbed up these steps and offered it through. It wasn't easy because it's still quite high. Anyway, once you got the lead through, you could shake and, and it came down and, th and then it was tied halfway along the side. There's a hook there somewhere. And uh, it was um, then when you, we put a, a piece of wool on each balloon uh, and, and, and then we got them all together like that. And I, I'm, I'm still trying to remember, of course it's a while ago now, just what sort of a slip knot I used. I used some sort of a slip knot so as that when you pulled, because we used to hang them about at six foot down uh, and, and that, that then gradually pull them up and it pulled the slip knot loose and of course all the balloons come down. And that's what Marlene what wants me to do for the dance <laughs> so I, I just have to we'll have to have a, du a dummy run somehow <laughs> <laughs> probably have to haul Marlin by her ankles oh, well, that'll be a sight to see <laughs> it certainly would wouldn't it <laughs> <laughs> so, that's yeah. great as well as I'm concerned so unless mm -hmm. there's anything else you want yeah. to remind no, me about no I can't think of anything else so, uh, th th this is the um, better sometimes when there's more than one yeah. that uh, you can remind each other of things but